Yeah, hello everyone and a warm welcome to the last talk of um, this talk series, uh, Women in History on Education. And um, we've got Valentina Gaudiano here today. She's um, a lecturer at um, the Sofia University Institute in Italy. And uh, she's a lecturer of the faculty at the moment. And um, she uh, received her PhD from the LMU in Munich. And uh, she's uh, specialized in phenomenology. Um, she's uh, got numerous uh, publications um, in phenomenology and um, especially on Edith Stein. And she was a visiting fellow at the Center for the History of Women Philosophers and Scientists last um, year. And yeah, we are delighted to have you here today, Valentina. And um, yeah, she's going to talk uh, to us about um, Edith Stein's concept of building to become uh, what one is. Thank you so much for being here, Valentina. Thank you, Clara. Thank you for the invitation, for the presentation. So for this possibility to, to speak together about this item of education, uh, from the viewpoint of Edith Stein. I will start. Uh, ah, I have to share my screen, but I cannot, Clara. It should be possible now, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I have a little presentation. Can you see my share, my monitor? Yes, yes, it's working, yeah, perfect. Okay, we can go. Yes, okay, I think it, so it's okay. Fantastic. <laughs> so, Edith Stein's concept of Bildung to become what one is. Um, I give a brief introduction to the item. Okay. When we talk about Bildung formation in Edith Stein's thought, we cannot avoid a reflection on the term build, image, that has a tribal declination. A build, copy, or build, archetype, and bildung, formation. Or in a general sense, we can also speak of education. It is therefore an image that is a copy of something else, an archetype, perhaps the very something else of which there is a copy, that informs something, someone. We find this concatenation of words and concepts, particularly in Steinian analysis of education, while the concept of build in, in its Latin meaning of imago is used in endliches und ewiges sein, finite being and eternal being. The, the build is what of, is, um, the build in the meaning of Edith Stein is that of God, of the tree young God, and all creation reproduces it as Imago Dei, trace of God. Edith Stein's main interest was the study of the human being in his here material, psychic, and spiritual dimension, and in his here individuality and belonging to a community and social context. However, she reflected also on the ways of formation and development of the self and the collective, as well as on the spiritual religious dimension, referring explicitly and in depth to the theme of image and feeling, as well of, as sensitivity or perception. More specifically, we find in the German thinker a reflection on that princip principal aspect of the human being that is feeling, feeling from the outside, and feeling from the inside, particularly the client in empathy, in German Einfühlung. This binds us and gives access to that image, which becomes central to development of the human being and can open up new understandings and relationships with the world of beauty and art in a formative theme. So we will now focus on the concept of Bildung, formation, and Stein's understanding of it and then trace its origin or reference model, a built copy and urbild archetype within air ontology. So on the concept of building in Edith Stein's anthropological framework. 
Edith Stein uses the noun Bildung to delineate the educational processes. I quote here, on the one hand, it designates the action of forming, building, or even the process of being formed. And on the other hand, the result of this activity, that which confers the character of being formed to the formed object. The word building means to form a material and thereby create an image, built or something formed, gebilden. The reflection on the formative process starts from the level of the material, because malleable, formable, and first of all, all the inanimate materials, tote stoffe, that let themselves be formed according to an external form, archetype of the produced of the product to be formed, or reproduce an archetype through gestures that give it form. Living matter, on the other hand, shows a double level. It can be formed from the outside, but it can change and develop autonomously. Here says Stein, and I quote here again, a formation from within takes place, an internal form acts as a shaper. End of quote. This internal vital principle is the soul in the Aristotelian Thomasian sense. In an almost mysterious way, it moves the plant from within so that it grows and develops according to an archetype that is not visible to the naked eye, and in the many possibilities inherent in it, lets it to take, a, to take on as many forms. If we look at the animal world, we can see a farther degree of formation, because the vital principle is not exactly the same of that of the plant world. In fact, animals not only move, they feel, because they are capable, when faced with external interventions, of reacting in a diversified way. Animals feel that something can do them good or harm, and this feeling is an expression of their psychic soul. According to Stein, it is here that we can speak of true soul formation and soul form based on a system of sense stimuli and reactions. But let, go, but let us go one step further. And I quote again, in the human being too, we find a sensitive openness to external and internal impressions and the reaction to external impressions with instinctive acts and movements. We see colors as the colors of things. We hear sounds at a given point in space emitted by some things. We experience tactile qualities such as hardness, smoothness, etc., of bodies. I experience brightness as an unpleasant stimulus before which I close my eyes. A shrill noise hurts me so much that I plug my ears. So Stein. However, we also experience reactions that go against instinct. We realize how certain sensations have a purely, purely physical reper repercussion in us, but we experience the emotions we perceive in the outside world. The human soul, therefore, Although it has within, within it the traits and potentialities of the vegetative and sensory soul, has additional faculties, that is, a rational dimension expressed in the spirit. In the human being, the inner life means being conscious, having an eye that looks inward and outward, that not only reacts to stimuli, but acts spontaneously, creates, elaborates, reflects, has self-conscious consciousness, saying I of one, oneself and placing oneself responsibility before the world. The ego, according to Stein, is the support of one's own life in the sense that from it springs the inner life that one lives as the own life. This life is not necessarily to identify with rational knowledge or with an understanding of oneself. This is the condition of infants and children, because this take over in the process of development and growth until the moment in which one is able to understand one's own laws and adapt one's behavior to them. One feels, therefore, what is happening in his body and is aware of it. This feeling is then transformed into intellectual perception, which in turn translates into knowledge of everything that falls under the senses. Finally, from this corporeal, sensible dimension, 
the ego rises as a spirit establishing itself in its higher being. This is the realm of freedom, where it can create something of itself through free acts. However, what exactly is to be formed of this being that is more complex than mere matter and the living in general? The self must be formed. That is, the self that is aware of and reflects upon itself, the self that does not dwell only on the surface of its living body, but finds a home in its death, which is the human soul. It must be formed, taking into account all the levels that compose it. And this means making concrete experience of research of the personal being that in the significant articulation of body, psychic, spiritual subject, looks at its life as a whole, of which it is an active protagonist, free and responsible. The aim of Bildung, ah, sorry. It is, I quote again from Edith Stein, it is in the family that the child comes into existence. Through the family he comes into existence, he grows up under its care and tutelage, thinking, feeling, acting with others, with adults, just living in the community. He learns to think, to feel, and to act. He grows as a member of the community, but at the same time also as an individual, because the individual nature that comes into the world with him begins to awaken, lives and operates in the acts he performs in and with the community, giving them its own imprint. And of course. So the aim of Bildung is the human person in the totality of his hair constituent dimension, so that every educational process committed to shaping the human being must have as its final outcome the fully realized human being according to his or her own nature. That is, the human being as a living psychophysical body, as a spiritual person, as a historical, communitarian and cultural being, as a seeker after God. In the shaping of the human being, every man or woman is responsible for him or her, for herself in relation to him, herself, and others. And it is up to him what he is and what he is asked to make of himself something better mind. He can and must shape himself. How does it happen? Or rather, according to what image, must the soul take form and who is the subject of the forming action? In order to answer these questions, we must first clarify what it means to form oneself and focus on the ambiguity of the term Bildung. As we read in Bildung und Entfaltung der Individualität, formation and development of individuality, um, one of the most important readings of Edith Stein about uh, Bildung and education in general, Stein explains that if we replace the noun Bildung with the verb Bilden, we can say that every forming is a self-forming, self-bilden. To put it more clearly, in, very forming, in every forming activity, it is the agent that forms itself. That means the subject and the object of this activity coins it. If, on the other hand, we understand formation, Bildung as the result of formative work, then it clearly means that all formation is self-processed formation. So we have therefore yeah, a multiplicity of understandings for what we call self-formation. First, a process of growth in which the opposition between forming subject and formed object is eliminated. It is I myself, who, as I grow for myself. On the other hand, second, the forming action, understood in its reflexive meaning, there is an autonomous forming and being form, formed, again excluding the opposition between subject and object information. And third, an acquired possession of the personality, that's mean the result of oneself, which springs again from one's own activity and not from the intervention of others. 
So this human capacity for self-formation means to process the materials that come from outside and from within in such a way that they support us and make us mature or the contrary to neglect them. In fact, again, Edith Stein, the free behavior of, of the soul does not embrace its whole being, but is an inter in interference in an ongoing happening and in so far as its behavior leaves traces in it, so that it first receives a development and strong imprint from outside. On the other hand, one cannot think of a human being as solitary, but always in a context, Umwelt, the German word, in a community with others, so that the process of formation is affected. So it is true that each person is responsible for his or her own formation and what he or she does with it, but it is equally true that he or she depends on others, on human educators, who in turn have a different responsibility from that of that subject himself or herself. For those around us, there is a responsibility and a duty to provide us with what is necessary for our training. But what we ultimately do with it is no longer dependent on others. This means in the wake of the indications that come from Stein and reflection, that every man and woman finding in themselves the meaning of their lives and the form of their humanity are as personal subjects, the protagonist and real agent of their own and others' building. It now remains to understand according to which principle or model this happens. While accepting that the process of human development and formation can follow human models, Stein locates this model the image we must turn to and which must guide this process in God. For following human models can be risky if it leads one to seek something not inscribed in one's own nature. Similarly, trying to inform oneself according to an ideal not in tune with one's own nature is difficult to achieve authentic building. For each individual human being, so says Edith Stein, an archetype of what he or she is to be is prefigured in the divine spirit. God created the human being in his own image, but only in Christ, the son of God, is this image perfect. Therefore, we must take in as much of this image as possible so that it penetrates deep into our soul, becomes its inner form and shapes us from within. This principle must also be followed in the process of forming others, not in the sense that everyone must be equal, but in the sense that the formation process is an excavation aimed at bringing out that image of Christ, which is expressed in the capacities and talents of the individual. Individuality, I quote again from Stein, is the image of the individual, of the individual human being, which God himself bears within himself, the according to which he wishes it to be formed is part of the mysteries which God himself has reserved for himself in which no man is given to fully understand. So, third part, the crafting of anthropology into ontology. This recalls the necessary question on the relation between the first being, God, and the plurality of finite beings which, according to Edith Stein, unfolds in the terms of the analogia entis, according to which the divine being person is the archetype who are built of all finite beings persons. Now, since the divine person is a being in relation to the three divine persons, finite beings must also be within themselves this characteristic or imprint. The archetype, according to which not only the human being, but also the entire created world seeks meaning and fullness of life, is therefore the Trinity. The three divine persons also have the characteristic of being spiritual, of having, that is, an, an interiority that keeps itself entirely in a continuous gift of itself. In the Trinity, the divine persons keep themselves completely depriving themselves of their own essence while preserving it intact. Now, if everything about creatures derives from God, who is the life that creates itself from itself, then the three forms of real being, 
body, soul, and spirit should also in some way correspond to the three divine persons. To the father, who is only for himself, would correspond the soul. To the son, the essential incarnate form, the body. To the Holy Spirit would correspond the finite spirit. It would be the archetype of all created life and the action of material beings. The unity of the Trinity, in which meaning and force are both essential fullness, gives meaning and existential perfection. Therefore, to purely corporeal beings as well as to living ones. Among living beings, a particular expression or reproduction upbuilt of the Trinity are human beings. Their being person is the greater thing they have in common with God and pure spirits, albeit in a different way. For the human being, conscious and free, is not able to form his old self autonomously as God or the, uh, the pure spirits. Nevertheless, the Trinitarian image is also found in the interpersonal dynamic. When two persons give themselves freely to each other, they become one. And this involves spiritually accepting the beloved being, making the lover the image of the beloved. The fruit resulting from their union bears the mark of their common essence. So the kind of generation is possible precisely between spiritual persons and between pure spirits. So each community of persons as its archetype in the Trinity, repeated in a different way from the individual essence. And this brings us to the last point, to understand formation as an aesthetic process. Therefore, from building, we have arrived at a build and vice versa. It is from a build that the process of building moves as the reception and internalization of the image of God Trinity. We can say that the existential journey of the human being is a journey of formation. In so far as it is self-formation and formation to others, a journey of listening to and putting into form what is felt outside and inside. This means that education is in some way an aesthetic process, a constant search for and reproduction of that one image that is expressed in infinite tones, as many as there are human beings and for each one as many stages of life. Each of us is a work of performing art, whose artist is the self that processes materials of various kinds, its own and those of others, in order to model the original image already impressed in it. Nevertheless, not only the other persons play an important role in this process, but also the material goods, particularly those produced by the human being, who as a spirit moves in a world of values. This means that human beings can draw them for their development and formation, not only from other human beings, but also from the beauty of nature or works of art from the variety of colors to the variety of sounds. Stein writes, values such as goodness, beauty, sublimity are not persons nor acts of persons. They are objects for subjects and not themselves subjects. If they are spiritual forms, we are in any case dealing with a new kind of spiritual formations with an objective spirit. End of quote. Indeed, when we look at a, at a natural landscape, welcoming it into ourselves, we participate in some way to something that this landscape emanates in the same, in the same way as when we come into contact with a work of art of any kind. This state of mind arouses in us in something spiritual, something steady in the original sense of the word. Everything releases something that we can welcome into us as in a from to movement, as Patricia Maganaro defines it, which does not engulf the object, but pre preserves it, freeing its meaning. We can do this by virtue of empathy, of that feeling inside, which is both feeling in and feeling from to, in the sense from the other to me, from. The, the work of art, for example, or the landscape to me, and vice versa.
Eddie Stein highlighted the dynamic knowledge character of empathy because through it we come to know others and ourselves by bringing them inside us, grasping their inside to the outside in a never-ending process. Empathy gives us back images of ourselves and of the other. It works, to quote again Patricia Manganaro, like the mirror. It gives, up, it gives us back an image of ourselves, but it is not us. It is not even a portrait or a photograph. The image refers to a swollen presence of that knot which transcends me. This immortal image repeats in some way that of God, which the human being transmits into the objects he she creates, but also into the words he she speaks and writes, as well as, as into the gestures he she performs. Just contributing to a process of common formation in which each person becomes the focus person for that image, shaping it and being shaped by it. The formative process must strongly take into account the specify of the human as such, the human as male and female, and the human as a specific individual. Under the impetus of feminist movements, Stein considers it essential to continue the process of emancipation of women understood in the sense of the appropriate education on a par with that received by men, but at the same time capable of enhancing their specific contribution as women in the private as well as in the public sphere. It was precisely for this reason that she devoted a series of lectures, later collected in a single volume, Die Frau, the woman, uh, to women, their development and the specific training they should receive at school, university and work. However, the characterization of the human being as male and female, with the differentiations that it entails, finds a further differentiation in the individual. Every individual has its place and its task in one great development of humanity. Every single human being is a member of this whole. The human species is only perfectly realized in the course of world history, in which the great individual, humanity, becomes concrete. In this sense, the Steinian educational proposal, taking into account historical cultural limits linked to, to, his, to her context, starts from the principle that every human being comes into the world incomplete, and that life is entirely a process of formation from oneself and of oneself and to others. This process must lead each individuality to reach its full unfolding, its own image, together with its own humanity which is then further declined into masculinity and femininity. To become therefore what one already is could summarize this process. This requires a variety of educational means and instruments, but also full confidence in one's own being and courage to implement it, to listen to the individual's vocation for a given activity and to be ready to follow it. And so I conclude with um, a quotation of Edith Stein, a human being who is what he or she is in a very personal way has to be, who walks his or her own path and does his or her own work, this is what one can point to as the aim of individual formation work. His way, not the way he should chooses for him or herself arbitrarily, but the way by which God leads him. End of quotation. In this sense, Parents, educators, teachers are all responsible together with their children or scholars to contribute to this process by having full respect of the personal project of life and trying to help reciprocally to realize it. Perhaps today we find a similar approach in the method of peer coaching in which the coachee has to find a way forward in dealing with a certain situation or difficulty while the coach only has to listen to him or her help and accompany him here to arrive at his own solution to questions. So thank you for the attention.